Hi, my name is Adam, and welcome to this video introducing the Sami languages, which in English can be written with either of these three spellings. Now, the first thing I want to point out, which may already be clear from the title, is that there is not one Sami language. Rather, Sami is a language family consisting of no less than 10 distinct but related languages. The Sami languages are spoken in a wide area covering northern Norway, Sweden, Finland, and Russia. This map shows the approximate traditional spread of the Sami languages, but in the Nordic countries there are also notable concentrations of speakers in northern urban areas outside of this area, as well as in the capital regions. Altogether, Sami languages are spoken by almost 30,000 people, although figures about the numbers of speakers of Sami are often unreliable and should always be taken with a grain of salt. This means that speakers of Sami languages actually constitute a linguistic minority in the traditional area, which is a direct result of historical oppression of the Sami and of conscious efforts to discourage the use of their language. In fact, most Sami people of today do not speak a Sami language at all, but rather speak the national language of the country that they live in. From southwest to northeast, the Sami languages are South, Yume, Pide, Lule, North, Inuri, Skolt, Akala, Kildin, and Ter. It might be tempting to view these languages as being of proportionally equal size, but this is far from the case. North Sami is the largest Sami language by far, with about 25,000 speakers, which counts for between 75 and 90% of all Sami speakers. Because of its size, North Sami is without doubt the strongest and most prominent Sami language, and most present-day Sami language media is indeed in North Sami. Most of its speakers live in Norway, but significant numbers also live in Sweden and Finland, in that order. The second largest Sami language is Lule Sami, which has about 2,000 speakers, which is quite a step down in absolute numbers. About two-thirds of Lule Sami speakers live in Sweden, and the remaining third live in Norway. The third largest Sami language is South Sami, and at this point it starts getting a bit unnerving, because South Sami only has about 500 speakers. Of these, about half live in Sweden and half in Norway. Next, we have three languages with about 300 speakers each. These are Inuri, Skolt, and Kildin. Inuri Sami is spoken around Lake Inuri in northern Finland and is the only Sami language exclusive to this country. Skolt Sami was, as you can see on the map, traditionally spoken in Russia, but today it's mostly spoken in Finland. The reason for this is that the traditional Skolt lands were once divided between Finland and the Soviet Union, and when Finland was forced to cede this territory to the Soviets in the aftermath of World War II, most of the Skolt Sami population was evacuated to Inuri Sami territory, where their descendants still live today. Kildin Sami was and is still spoken in Russia. Somewhat tellingly, it is Russia's major Sami language by far. Moving on to the really small languages, next up is Pide Sami. This language has about 40 speakers, most of whom are above the age of 50. Having disappeared from Norway, Pide Sami is now spoken exclusively in Sweden. Its neighbor, Yume Sami, is in a similar situation. Also gone from Norway, Yume Sami is spoken by about 25 people who live in Sweden and who are generally above the age of 60. And these two languages might seem as small as they get, but they're actually significantly stronger than the currently smallest Sami language, Ter Sami. Ter Sami is spoken in Russia, and only has two native speakers left, both elderly, meaning it's currently on the very brink of extinction. Finally, the last Sami language, Akala Sami, has no native speakers left at all. The last one, Maria Sirgina, died in December 2003. There are, however, a handful of people who still have knowledge of the language. As this overview shows, the Sami languages are definitely in a tight spot. Centuries of oppression have taken their toll, and many speakers can still recall how they were punished or shamed for speaking their language at school or in church. In fact, all Sami languages are currently on UNESCO's list of endangered languages, where they are classified as either definitely endangered, severely endangered, critically endangered, or extinct. North Sami is the only definitely endangered language. South, Lule, Inuri, Skolt, and Kildin Sami are considered severely endangered. Yume, Pide, and Ter Sami are classified as critically endangered, and Akala Sami is considered extinct. But despite all this, and even though there is certainly still room for improvement, it must be said that many of the Sami languages are in a much better position today than they've been in for many years. As you know by now, the Sami languages are spoken in four different countries, 
Norway, Sweden, Finland, and Russia. In the former three, Sami is recognized as a minority language and is co-official in a number of municipalities. In Russia, Sami has yet to receive any official recognition whatsoever. What the official status actually means differs from state to state, but at the very least it includes the nominal right to use Sami with authorities and the right to have certain services offered in Sami. In Norway, Sami was recognized in 1992 and is co-official in these 10 municipalities. In Sweden, Sami was recognized in the year 2000 and is co-official in these 19 municipalities. In Finland, Sami was also recognized in 1992 and is co-official in these four municipalities. As you can see from this, quite a lot has happened in a relatively short amount of time, and much remains to be seen regarding how the status and use of the Sami languages will continue to develop. But this aside, grassroots support and activism for the revitalization of the languages is strong and ongoing, especially in the Nordic countries, and many of the languages are now finally catching a break. When it comes to writing, there is again a lot of variation. South, Yume, Lule, North, Inari, and Skold Sami all have standardized orthographies based on the Latin alphabet. Pide and Kilden Sami do not have standardized orthographies, but they do have alphabets that are generally agreed upon, and there are standardization processes in progress. Pide Sami also uses the Latin alphabet, but Kilden Sami instead uses Cyrillic, just like Russian. Ter and Akala Sami do not have any established or traditional alphabets, but are generally also written with a Cyrillic script. I'll now show you all of the special letters used in the various Sami languages. As you're about to see, all alphabets are different, but many letters do reappear in many of them, so try to see if you can keep track of them. South Sami uses four extra letters, but since people in Norway and Sweden can't agree on sticking to a common system, different versions of two of the letters are used depending on the country. Yume Sami uses the following nine letters. Yume Sami is by far the youngest standardized Sami language, being officially recognized as recently as April 2016. Pide Sami doesn't have an official alphabet yet, but these four extra letters are the ones generally used when writing the language, and at this point it's looking likely that its officiality is only a matter of time. Lule Sami also has four extra letters, and just like South Sami, one of the letters is different depending on whether you're using a Norwegian or a Swedish standard. North Sami has seven extra letters and has the only Sami Latin alphabet that doesn't use any special letters that are also found in Norwegian, Swedish, or Finnish. Inari Sami uses the following eight extra letters, and it follows a trend that we get more extra letters the further east we go. Skold Sami uses 15 extra letters, making it the largest of the Sami Latin alphabets, containing several letters not used in any other Sami language. And finally, for those of you familiar with the Cyrillic script, Kilden Sami uses the following 19 extra letters, with variations shown around slashes. The Sami language family forms a linguistic continuum which means that speakers of one language can usually understand their neighbor's languages well enough, but are unable to understand the varieties from further away. The main linguistic division within the Sami family is the one between west and east, and speakers from either side of this line are generally unable to understand the Sami of the other side. There are also two subgroups within each group, and speakers from these groups can usually communicate with each other with a little effort. To show you all what it can look like, let's have a look at a couple of words in the different Sami languages. Let's put the languages in geographical order all the way from south to northeast. This way, you'll be able to get a small glimpse both of how the different languages look and also how they relate to each other. So, the words are from left to right. The nouns bird, water, and tree, followed by the attributive form of the adjective dry, and finally the verb to come. To make it a bit easier, we'll use a Latin transcription for the Kilden and Tersami words. There are a lot of things to say about these words, but we'll try to stick to what's central. First of all, there are a couple of spellings that look different, but actually represent the same or very similar sounds. For example, we have TJ in South, Yume, Pide, and Lule Sami, versus the C Karen of the other languages. And the same word, TS and C, are also identical. We also have initial G and B in the Western languages, being pronounced more or less the same as K and P in the Eastern ones. 
On a more general note, the A with a circle represents an O-like sound, and what looks like an apostrophe denotes palatalization. Relationship-wise, we can see in these words that the Eastern languages skolt, kilden, and tear have dropped the final vowel. In the word bird, we can also see how kilden and tear have kept an N that has disappeared in the other languages. Another difference is found in the word dry, where the Y sound in the Western languages corresponds to a SH sound in the Eastern ones. Also, remember that all of these words are related, which makes languages look more similar than they actually are. As a counterexample, we can take the word to say, where we instead find a lot of variation in which word is preferred by the different languages. On a greater scale, the Sami languages form their own linguistic branch within the Uralic language family. Their closest relatives are found in the Finnic branch, which consists of Finnish and Estonian, among others. This historical relationship can be seen in several common words, for example, these North Sami ones. Kiella, Chalepmi, Tolla, Mannat, Eallit. Grammar-wise, a characteristic of many Sami languages is how the core part of a word often changes depending on what endings are attached to it. In North Sami, for example, there is such alternation in the consonants, so from the verb boahti, meaning to come, we get boadan, meaning I come, and the participle boahti, meaning coming. In South Sami, by contrast, alternation is instead found in the vowels, so from the verb boahtet, also meaning to come, we get bottom, meaning I come, and bötim, meaning I came. Another grammatical feature of all Sami languages is the presence of a negative verb. So instead of having a word that means not, Sami has an inflected verb doing the same job. It's actually not too different from English, where the negative form of I come usually is I don't come rather than the archaic I come not. So, using North Sami as our sample language once again, we have boadan and boadat, meaning I come and you come, respectively. With the negative verb, we then get in boade and ih boade, meaning I don't come and you don't come. And if you look at the final consonants, you'll see how the negative verb i conjugates just like the regular verb boadit when that's the main verb of the sentence. To round off, I'm going to let you listen and read along to a short text in North Sami, read by a native speaker of the Tornay dialect, which is spoken in the southwestern part of the North Sami area. The text in question is the opening part of the work An Account of the Sami, published in 1910 by Johan Turi. Its original title is Muitalus Sami Birra, and it's a classic work among the Sami, being the first book ever published in a Sami language. Mulle äkta sähmälös, kut le parkan viso sämi parkkuit, ja mut ottan viso sämi tili. Ja mulle ihminen ruoha hällihus, hällitä min vehki no oloko sähtä. Mutta se ei otsu rikta tjelkasa, jorko tälle min ellin ja tilli. Tein ko sähmälös, ei sähti juuri juste tjelke nuko le. Ja tässä le tääsipä. Ko sähmälös puhta muskus kammeri. Te soni ipmer he palio meitke, ko ipiega peso posso nyoni uoste. So juuri taka hei kolka, kole seine ja moskos vaivenalte. And so, this introduction to the Sami languages is over. Stay tuned for more videos about Sami and for introductions to other language families. Thank you for watching.